there are some days where I just can't stop thinking about a particular kind of food until I eat it, like a tasty pizza with black olives on top. I just get stuck in a pie olive mode. We've all had the experience of running into a dead end while we're trying to figure out something. Figuring out how to move forward with a project. Figuring out how to get ourselves into a workout routine. Figuring out how to solve a puzzle or answer a pressing question. For challenging problems, there's often a painful transition as we go from humming along on all cylinders, rapidly closing in on the answer, to a grinding, painful crawl. As our muses abandon us and we're left quietly pounding our temples in fruitless frustration with nothing to show for hours of agonizing effort. Nobody likes that feeling. This is for that. There are a few notable instances in human history where we were catapulted forward in our understanding of the universe, where suddenly something important changed in how we went about doing that, and as if we had unstopped a dam, answers and information rushed in faster than they ever had before. The development of the printing press was one such occasion, where previously books were hard to come by and only available to a select few in power, Knowledge was suddenly easily replicated and distributed. Reading and writing became widespread, and suddenly millions of people could pick up a copy of the Bible or Protagoras and connect to the teachings of the past in a way that they couldn't before. Research. The scientific revolution is another obvious example. Rather than abstract speculation, trying to derive how everything ought to work by consulting ancient authorities or debating what they meant, the humble, controlled observation and measurement of nature's actual behavior the emphasis on trying things out and diligently testing ideas against that behavior to validate them granted us incredible insight into the operation of the universe. Science was an interesting new philosophy of how to go about finding natural laws, and it rocketed us forward and upward. Experimentation. Initially, computers were just that, tools for computation. But the analytical power of computers has been instrumental for allowing us to understand things that we'd have no hope of grasping otherwise. Genetics, physics, astronomy, engineering, we might have collected millions of data points that would be totally meaningless if we didn't have that capacity for number crunching and simulation. The ability to manipulate and compare data on scales that a human couldn't possibly access on their own has magnified our understanding thousands of times over and brought us answers to questions we wouldn't have even thought to ask without it. Analysis. Now, caricaturing entire historical eras like this is incredibly reductive. But it's a compelling way to think about how our collective mentality for figuring things out was shifting during these upheavals. Research, experimentation, and analysis represent three different modes of discovery that feed on and reinforce each other, and which stagnate when they're pursued single-mindedly without investing in the others. Think of trying to pedal a bicycle with three distinct motions of your leg. Up, down, back. Up, down, back. You might strain heroically in one of the three motions, pushing down harder and harder to will yourself forward. But as you reach the extreme of that motion, you're going to run up against the boundaries of what it can achieve. That doesn't mean that your power in that motion isn't up to the task. It means that you have to use one of the others to get anywhere, and you lose more momentum the longer you wait to switch modes. Aimless, meandering research can be fun, but without analysis, the factoids gathered are useless for building an answer to your question. There's no magical number of bullet points that will suddenly assemble a model of the world for you. You have to spend some time thinking to process and connect them. Without yoking fact-gathering to some ultimate goal of a trial or experiment, it's tempting to wiki-walk your way down a thousand interesting paths of inquiry that get you nowhere, that can't be marshaled into a plan of action or a way forward, and you won't be able to narrow your search space by looking at the requirements or the results of your testing. Experimentation is a great mechanism for understanding, but without researching what's already been tried, it's common to waste time and resources rehashing the same dead ends that hundreds have tried already, or reinventing a readily available wheel. Just ask the patent office how many amateur inventors want to try developing this cool new idea they had about how to get free energy from nowhere. Without analyzing and mulling over your results, you can't hone your experiments in on an area of inquiry more likely to bear fruit. You're simply twiddling variables at random and crossing your fingers that something happens to start working. Evolution is kind of like that. It tends to take a very, very long time. Analysis, uncoupled from the other two modes of inquiry, tends toward pure thought spinning frictionless in the void. Without research, not only will you miss out on critical information necessary for accurate conclusions, you won't be able to build on any previous efforts at solving similar problems, or use any of those analytical tools, making your thinking both redundant and much less productive than it could be. 
Without the practical constraints of experimentation, it's inevitable that even very smart people go sailing off into meaningless speculation that ends up crashing to earth when someone gets the bright idea to try it in the real world. The cyclic nature of this sort of research, analysis, experimentation rhythm can be seen echoed in all sorts of different problem-solving techniques, but I've never seen it explicitly laid out like this. I found that this way of thinking about the process of figuring things out is helpful when I hit a speed bump in that process, when I get stuck somewhere and feel my time and energy bleeding away, weighed down by two or three solid questions that don't seem to be going away, no matter how hard I keep doing the same thing that I've been doing. It's not just a relief to change tactics and try something else for a while, it's often exactly the right move to make substantial, rapid progress. Looking at those three periods in human history, I see echoes of the advantages that I gain when I practice mode switching. Can you think of anywhere that a similar strategy has been useful for you, or a different historical example? Please leave a comment below and let me know what you think. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to blah blah subscribe blah share, and don't stop thunking.